Hi and welcome to this short tutorial on how to add your USG Flex to Nebula. Unlike other Nebula devices, the USG Flex differs slightly on its initial process. In this tutorial we'll go over some of the options and explain some of the advantages of this process. So let's get started and head over to Nebula and create yourself a Nebula account. Alternatively, you can either log in with your MyZizel account or an existing Nebula account. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll run through the initial first use wizard, but in the case where you already have an existing Nebula org and site that you wish to add a USG Flex to, then you can skip this part of the tutorial. Once you've logged in, you'll be presented with the first time usage wizard. So let's get started by clicking on Let's Start. In the first step, you'll need to create an organization and a first site. So name your organization and give your site its first name. Of course, you can always change this later if you decide that you want to update the names of both the organization and site name. Then select the country and time zone. By default, these boxes will try to automatically display your current location and time zone. So now we need to add your first device. And in our case, we want to add a USG Flex. So you'll need to add the USG Flex's MAC address, which is the first address in the range and the serial number. It's also possible to run a similar wizard via the Nebula app on Android or iOS devices. This gives the added feature of scanning the QR code located on the underside of the device or on the box. Once you've added the device, press Add and then Next. So from here, we can skip the Wi-Fi settings unless this is something that you really want to configure. But this is used for Zizel Nebula APs. So we can either press next or skip Wi-Fi. We're going to press next. And also we can pre-configure the guest Wi-Fi and other settings here. Before moving on to the initial part of the USG Flex's ZTP, the zero touch provisioning process. So unlike other Nebula devices, the USG Flex includes the ZTP process. The advantage here is that you can pre-configure the WAN side, i.e. the internet service provider information. In a standard installation, switches and access points are normally handed DHCP from a gateway and are then able to automatically provision via the internet. But in the case of a gateway, it's often required to define the one side, i.e. the internet connectivity information, in order for the device to gain access to the internet in the first place. This means that even with a cloud managed device, you will need to access the device locally and configure these settings on the device before it can establish a connection to auto provision the rest of its settings. With the ZTP process in place, you can predefine the WAN information. It can then be either pushed to the device via a URL link or via a USB stick to ease the deployment process. Both of these methods will be covered within this tutorial. So from this part of the wizard, you can select the WAN connectivity type. By default, it is set to DHCP, but you can also predefine either the static information like this or PPPoE like this. After defining these configuration settings, you can select I will install the USG Flex by myself or select an alternative email address to send the information to. We will select I will install the USG Flex by myself, meaning that the account holder logged in will receive the information to continue or complete the physical installation. By clicking next, we will then go to a summary screen to give us the summarized configuration of the wizard. So now click on go to Nebula dashboard. As we want to import a USG Flex with a bundled license, we will click on activate one month trial period of the Pro Pack. This will then take you to the dashboard of Nebula as shown, and you will also be issued an email. So let's just check if we've got the email. Okay, so here's the email with the instructions on what to do with the two installations options of plugging it either into the device or how to use a USB. So we'll come back to this in a minute. We'll go back to the dashboard. So from here, we can pre-configure the USG Flex maybe configure port configuration, port grouping information, 
We can define interfaces, even configure a new interface. So we'll add a VLAN, for example. So VLAN 10 with a IP address of 192.168.10.1. Maybe set the subnet to 255.255.255.0. .255 we could configure DHCP as a server. It's maybe 192.168.10.10 .10 with a pool size of 100. We can configure the DNS uh, the least time we can also add additional advanced functionality in here as well once we've finished we can just press ok and there we go we have a vlan configured so of course we can you know take the time to pre-configure nat vpn firewall functionality security services and certain so, you know and a whole bunch of configuration before we even deploy the device so it's pre-configured and ready to go so once you're happy with your configuration, we can now move back to the email with the information about how to deploy or the next steps. Okay, so here's the email which describes the physical process of migrating the device to Nebula. So first things first, you must have the device factory reset, so all on its default settings. And you also must have the device on the latest firmware at the time of this recording, which is ZLD 5.0. In order to join Nebula, the device must have ZLD 5.0 or above. The support for Nebula was introduced after the launch of the USG Flex, so you will need to check and upgrade if necessary. If you're unfamiliar with the upgrade process or firmware upgrade process of a Zizel device, we do have knowledge base articles that cover the different methods. For this tutorial, I will use the Zon, the Zizel One Network Utility, to perform the upgrade. We'll plug it into the device in the same manner described in the email. So in the email, it shows this diagram. So I've plugged my laptop into P4, which is clearly marked on the device and the internet into P2. On the USG Flex 100 and 100W, these are on the back of the unit, but it's still clearly marked in the same way. Okay, so I'll move over to the laptop attached to the device and I'll run Zon. So it's discovered the device and clearly you can see the USG Flex 100 and it's running the firmware V4.55. So we're going to need to click on this button here, this little icon at the top, which is for the firmware upgrade, which then gives you this dialog box. Okay, so under the online upgrade, it should show version 5.0 by default. But as I'm recording this slightly in advance of the official launch, I'll need to upgrade from my local PC. So let me just select this option and upload that yep okay so then you will need to add the admin password by default the usg flex in its default state will have the password of one two three four so we'll type that and press ok now the upgrade has been performed and the system light on the front of the device should start to flick so now the device should be upgrading this will be indicated by the system light on the front of the device flashing green before the device will actually reboot. This process takes between three to four minutes depending on the model. So I'll speed this bit up. I'm sure none of you really want to wait for a firewall to reboot. Once the device is rebooted and the system light is permanently green, the Zon utility will auto discover and refresh showing it's been successful. So as you can see now, the device is showing 5.0 as the current firmware. Okay, so now we have the firmware that supports Nebula, so ZLD 5.0 or above. We can now go back to the email. And as we mentioned before, we're already plugged into the device in the same way as this diagram. So into P2 and P4. So we can now go ahead and click on the link, allow Nebula to manage my device from this email. You will then see this screen appear as it goes through the deployment before presenting you with a successful message. And if we click on the link, go to Nebula Control Center, here we're able to see the device is now online and managed by Nebula. Okay, so this was method one, but there is a second method where you can use a new or clean USB stick. Attached to the email is a file that you can copy to the root of a USB stick. Each file created for a firewall is unique, so this means that if you're provisioning several devices, you can use one USB stick. Again, just like the previous method, the device must be on ZLD 5.0 and above. 
and it must be in factory default settings. Once you have placed the files into the root of the USB stick, plug it into one of the USB ports on your USG Flex device. Reboot the device with the USB stick plugged in. Once the device has a solid green system light, you can go to the Nebula dashboard to manage the device. Please note that it may take a few minutes for it to appear in Nebula for the first time. Okay, so we've covered how to add the USG Flex to Nebula. For more information, you can refer to our knowledge base article at support.zizel.eu.